everyone. Welcome to HCAM Sports Talk Live. I'm your host, Tom Nappy. On this edition, we have the latest Hopkinton Hillers spring sports highlights, and we'll play one of our classic interviews, which was done with Hillers boys lacrosse head coach Dan Norton and the captains. And we talked to them last April of 2020. We'll replay that interview for you. We had some great discussion and it kind of takes you back to the days of COVID, which obviously we hope we never have to experience anything like that again. And also we'll have some classic killer highlights on today's edition. So without further ado, here is the latest happenings in Hiller Sports. On Friday, May 14th, the one and three Hiller girls lacrosse team took on Norwood. The Hillers rallied in the first quarter. Aquilas rushes in, shot, and it's in. One nothing Hillers. Picked up by Dacey. Leads it over to Catherine Dacey. You got Emma and Catherine Dacey both out there. Here comes the Hillers once again. Rushing in, shot, and it's in. Jamie Arena makes it two to nothing. York working her way up towards the doorstep. There's a shot, and it's in. Three nothing Hillers. Behind the net over to Worrell. Worrell sneaks it over to McCula. Shot in. What a great setup by Worrell there, and a good score by Tiffany McCulis, her second goal of the day. Hopkinton scores six goals in the first quarter. They would take the win over Norwood 16-3 and improve to 2-3 and three on the season. On Monday, May 17th, Hiller Boys Lacrosse took on Holliston. took the match 11 to 8 and improved to 1 and 3 on the season. Also on Monday, May 17th, Hiller's softball took on Dover Sherborne. It was a scoreless game heading to the bottom of the first. And this is going to be up the left side. The throw home is going to get away from the catcher and the run will score. Way in on the corners and this pitch gets away from the catcher, the throw home. Not in time, and another Hiller's run scores. So Jersek comes around on the wild pitch. Bragdon deals, and this is hit high in the air towards left field, and that drops, and the runner from third is going to score. Hiller's plate five runs in the inning. They ended up taking the game in a five-inning mercy, 12 to nothing to improve to 5-0 oh on the season. Also May 17th, Hiller Baseball took on Dover Sherborne. The Blue Raiders led 2-1 to one heading to the bottom of the sixth. Hiller's played seven runs in the bottom of the sixth and took the game 8-2. to two. Hopkinton improves to 4-1 and one on the season. On Tuesday, May 18th, Hiller Baseball battled Ashland, trailing one to nothing. Hiller's rally in the bottom of the first. When everybody... There's a base hit right up the middle. Paharik gonna score easily. And Kelly is in there for a RBI single. Nice. There's a base hit in the center field. In comes Kelly, Paharik to third, no, locked to third. He stops, puts the brakes on. Nice job by Matt Cooper, first and third. Ball in the dirt, pass ball. Here comes Lock, slides in safely. Here's a ground ball through the hole in between third and short. Here comes Jarrett to the plate, cut off. Nothing doing, throw down to second base. Andrew Gunn is safe. The 
There's a ground ball beaten down the third baseline, picked up by the third baseman. And he has to eat it. Andrew Gaughan scores. A 6-3, Hiller's lead heading into the bottom of the second. Connor Kelly steps to the plate. Before getting hooked by Coach Simos. There's a fly ball deep. That's going back to the fence, and it's gone. Connor Kelly. It's a bomb to right field. Little repeat of last night's action. Good power, as we like to say here in this area. A solo shot. The home run makes it a 7-3 game. Hillers never look back. They took the win in a five-inning mercy, 13-3. Also on Tuesday, Hiller's softball took on Ashland. Hiller's trailed 3-1 heading in to the bottom of the second inning, but the bats got going. Line up in the pit. Gets a piece of this one, and that'll drop into left field. Here comes one run in to score. It's a 3-2 game, and Harrigan going to advance to second. Line up in the pitch. And she rips this one into center field. That gets down. And we are knotted up at three apiece. And now DeSimone will advance to second. And she gets a good piece of this one. That'll drop into center field. And here comes one run to score. Another runner right behind her. And here comes yet a third run. And that is a three RBI double by Katherine Morse. She clears the bases. Five run score in the bottom of the second to make it a six to three game. Hillers add four more runs in the third. Set the deal. And this is hit in the air over to right field. That'll get down. Alex Young gonna be waved around third. Here she comes to score. And now McCluskey continuing to third and it's an RBI triple. Fouled away, and it got away from the catcher, and here comes a run to score, and the throw's off the mark. And this is hit in the air over to right center. That'll drop down for a hit. A run in to score. Here comes Kester over to second base. She's going to keep going to third. The throw, not in time. An RBI triple for Kester. And this is hit in the air to the wall, and that'll drop in front of the wall. Another run around to score. Morse heading to second, an RBI double. A 10-3 game. Hillers would add eight more runs in the fourth inning and end up taking the five-inning Mercy win 18-3 over Ashland. Hillers improved to 6-0 and on the season. This past Monday, Hillers baseball took on Medfield. Medfield struck first in the top of the first. Larry Sacklad had the call. He's gonna start out of the stretch. There's a fly ball to center field. And that's over the head of the center fielder. That could be four. And it is. I heard Coach Simos warn the outfielders that the ball would skid. A one to nothing game heading to the bottom of the second, but the Hillers' bats got going. Mike Bernie. There's a base hit into right field. That run's coming to the plate. And he slides in safe. Score is tied. Cam Mulvaney. There's a little number over to Goodman. Picks it up and he throws it wide. He threw that ball wide. Mr. Pepperdine. A 3-1 to one Hiller's lead into the top of the third. Medfield responded. Again, Josh Fisher has a great move over to first base. 
And there it is. Oh, he had him picked off. Had him dead. There's a fly ball in the right, left field. Runner's going to tag Palmer. He scores easily. And it's 3 to 2. A 3 to 2 game into the top of the 4th and a nice pickoff happened. First getting a little extra. There it is. You're done. See you later. Go home. You got picked up. It remained a 3 to 2 Hillers lead until the sixth. There's a ground ball, and that's through in the right field. Is a ribby for Andrew gone. He's got a big grin on his face. I gotta believe. And it's four to two, Hopkinton. Four runs for Hopkinton, two for Medfield. That would be the last run of the game. Hillers baseball takes it four to two and improves to 2-0 and on the season. Hiller's softball also battled Medfield this past Monday. Scoreless game into the bottom of the first. Hunt deals. This is hit high in the air, right side, and caught. Runner from third is going to try to tag the throw in. Not in time. It's 1-0 Hiller's. Sacrifice RBI flyout for Harrigan. So run already in for the Hillers. CD gets a piece of this up the left side. Bobbled by the third baseman and a run scores. So CD reaches on the error. D. Simone comes around to score. Kester up to third. It's 2 0 Hillers. A 2 0 Hillers lead. Hopkinton added more in the bottom of the second. Strike, runner taking off the third, and she's safe. And now the ball gets by, and she's going to try to score, and will. Make it a 3 to nothing lead for the Hillers. And this is hit in the air over to right field, and that's going to get down for a hit. That was nearly out of the ballpark. And Kristen McCluskey rounding second, heading to third, and she is safe. A triple for Kristen McCluskey. And this is hit high in the air, left side, and caught. McCluskey going to try to tag and score, and she will with ease. A sacrifice RBI flyout for D. Simone. It was a 5-3 Hiller's lead into the bottom of the fourth, and the Hopkinton bats absolutely exploded. Heels. And this is hit in the air past the reach of the shortstop. One run is in to score. McCluskey heads to third. And it's an RBI single. And now advancing to second is going to be Desmone. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Up the right side. Love by the first baseman. She steps on the bag, gets the out, but another run scores. A job well done by Harrigan. Gets the sacrifice RBI ground out. Set the deal. And this is up the left side. That'll get through. Kester around to score. And it's a 9-3 game. This is going to roll all the way back to the wall. The center fielder had trouble tracking it down. And Harrigan's going to try to score now. And she'll come around to score. CD to third. And the throw gets into left field. And CD is going to stay put at third. And this is ripped in the left field. That'll get down for a hit, and a run will score. And now continuing on to second is Morse, an RBI double. Set to deliver, and this is up the middle, past the reach of the second baseman. Being waved around is Cheverie. She'll come around to score. And now the runner behind her is going to come around to score. Jurasek also in to score. A two RBI double for McCluskey. Nine runs in the bottom of the fourth. 
and Hillers scored another run in the bottom of the fifth to put the mercy rule into effect. Hopkinton comes away with a 15-3 victory. Hillers softball is now 2-0 on the season. Hillers girls lacrosse took on Westwood and Westwood went on a tear and took the game 19-2. Hillers girls lacrosse had one win and two losses on the season heading in to their Thursday night road matchup with Medfield. This past Tuesday, Hopkinton boys and girls track and field took on Ashland. The Hopkinton boys swept six different events in their 99-37 win over Ashland. Tommy Bernardin won the long jump and high jump with PRs in both. And Aiden Morin took first place in shot put and discus for the Hillers. In the girls track and field match with Ashland, Kate Powers won shot put and discus. Haley Tolson won the long jump 100 meter and anchored the four by 100. Olivia Jones won the 800 meter. Autumn Tumbleton won the mile and set a new record. Bridget O'Connor also came up with a win. Grace Prucher and Ellie Driscoll finished tied in the 100 meter hurdle. Chloe Johnson won the javelin. Bethel Flanagan took second in the 800 meter. And Hopkinton came up with a 110 22 win over Ashland. Well, this spring is certainly a lot different than last spring in many positive ways. We have spring sports. All the high school kids get to play their beloved spring sports. And now, no masks, no COVID rules, and uh, everything is starting to normalize. But last spring was a whole different story, as you, of course, know. And we talked last spring with Hiller's Boys Varsity Lacrosse head coach Dan Norton, as well as the captains of last year's team. So let's go back in time and rewatch a great interview with Coach Norton and the captains of last year's Hiller's Lacrosse team. I have Hiller's Boys Lacrosse head coach Dan Norton, and we also got uh, some of the captains here as well, Luke McDonald and Stephen Maffiori. We got Seth Jenkins and Connor Sullivan. Guys, how are you doing? doing great. Well. All right. And uh, Dan, Connor, just make sure uh, the mics are unmuted. There you go. Yep. Perfect. Great. How are you? Thanks Very for having good. Tom. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Uh, so uh, how have you guys been with uh, everything going on? Obviously, it's unfortunate that... Uh, you're not out there playing lacrosse right now, but uh, what have you been uh, doing to pass the time? We'll start off with Connor. Uh, you know, I've been still been able to do some wall ball and shooting. I've been doing these uh, Zoom workouts. Uh, and then also watching a lot of movies and Netflix and playing some video games. Terrific. What about you, Steven? Um, I mean, we're all pretty much doing the same thing. There's not too much to do here at home, but a lot of family time. We've been watching some movies, playing different games. Uh, I've been going on bike rides, which is cool, like at the Milford Bike Path and some trails in the woods. So any activities just to keep myself busy and hope for the best soon. How about you, Luke? Yeah, me and my brother have been biking a lot. Uh, we're really into mountain biking. And um, we've been playing a lot of wall ball, just like everyone else in the team, doing a lot of chores around the house. So we're staying busy. Excellent. And how about you, Seth? Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of running, trying to get outside as much as I can, even though it's been raining a lot. And uh, I've been painting my house, which has taken a lot of time. So uh, that's kind of my main priority right now. Uh, all right. And how about you, Coach? Um, similar to Seth, I was helping at my grandparents' house. They're selling. Um, so just helping move some stuff around last week and painting, and then we're going to attempt to redo the floors this week and uh have just been doing a lot of fishing too which has been nice to get out there it's very very relaxing and um they're actually you know stocking a lot in hopkin and and you know around the local areas too because 
they're emptying all the hatcheries from the uh, from the fishing plants. So some good fish out there. Absolutely. Um, maybe not the best day uh, for catching them today. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, uh, how have you been staying in contact with the players and what is some of the reaction uh, from them about everything going on? Um, yeah, we've been doing, uh, like Connor said too, we've been doing Zooms um, either once or twice a week. We also set up a Google Classroom, um, which uh, we have, you know, most of our guys in there. We have a few youth players in there as well. So if anybody's watching this, that's a youth player um, and you want to get into it. Uh, feel free to just shoot me an email. I can enter you in there um, or you can go on to our, any of our social media, just Hiller lacrosse on Twitter or Instagram. And uh, in the Google classroom, we're putting in drills and, you know, daily workouts. We've kind of shifted into another program that uh, uh, we put in a request for to, to get from the boosters. It's like a all online training um, type of thing. So we can still, you know, have our guys, you know, play the sport that they love to play. And, um, and it allows us to interact with each other too in the, in the classroom portion of it. And then on the zoom. And then as Connor was saying too, um, last Saturday, it was awesome. We had uh, Mike Peschler from athletic strength training, um, held a zoom workout for us. And, uh, and it was excellent. It was good to, you know, get everyone laughing and sweating together. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I'd be lying and these guys would be lying if they said it didn't, you know, stink right now that we're not out there, but we're trying to make the most of it and control what we can control. And for the players, uh, what do you, can you each talk about what you miss uh, most about just being out there on the field? Yeah. I mean, just seeing everyone's faces, uh, everyone getting better every day at practice, really miss that. Um, it's really one of the more memorable, memorable things throughout the season. So, yeah. I, just, I mean, in, with one of the best players. things in high school sports is just like everyone says they love to play and you love to play sports, but one of the best things about high school sports is just like the camaraderie we all have with each other. So like whether it's with the other seniors, or juniors, all the underclassmen, just going out there every day, playing the sport we love to play with, with I, like we're a family during the season. So just not being able to go out there with those guys is, is definitely something I miss. Yeah, I just miss being with the boys and competing together against other towns and just trying to win and then just putting in the work to get better every day. I would, again, I would say practice just because uh, the competition within the team, too, is really awesome. And we just try and make each other better. So it really shows on the field. And have you guys been doing uh, any workouts or drills to stay in shape for uh, the potential there is this season? And we certainly hope there is one at some point. Yeah, we, yeah. Have, uh, we have a lot of workouts and uh, stuff in the Google Classroom that Coach and uh, Mike Peschler have been giving us um, a lot of wall ball challenges and uh, different drills to do. So everyone's been taking full advantage of the resources we have and definitely getting better. Excellent. Um, and uh, coach, for those that don't know, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your coaching history and when you decided you wanted to uh, coach lacrosse? Um, so yeah, I started playing lacrosse as a young age, uh, at a young age. Um, you know, I was a younger brother, so um, thank goodness my brother played lacrosse. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have ever picked it up. Um, and I played other sports in high school, too, but really just fell in love with lacrosse. Um, went on to play in college, um, and Seth's actually going to the same place next year, so go Springfield. And, uh, you know, I loved it there. Um, played for an amazing coach that, you know, has really, you know, groomed a lot of, you know, high school head coaches, college head coaches, um, studied phys ed there. And, you know, kind of just fell into it. Um, you know, I helped out at my, or I, you know, went back to my alma mater first, um, you know, while I was teaching in Hopkins and I was coaching in Ashland and then the Hopkins job opened up and uh, came over here, been over here for six years now and um, been coaching total for 10. So, uh, Dan, is there any green in that blood of yours or is it still all blue? Uh, depends what day of the week it is. <laughs> <laughs> just, just check it on that. So, uh, listen, I see a lot of creativity going on with all these schools. And um, I saw you a little, uh, little dance video there at Marathon and everything. Are we going to see a lacrosse uh, video coming up? I don't, is that sounds like a challenge. I don't know. I don't uh, know it could be. <laughs> we might have to do it, yeah. Might have to do it. You got yeah. some moves there still. You can, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. Hey. Figure something out. I'd love to see it. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a challenge. That's something we can work on. <laughs> 
Now, in, uh, as you guys were just mentioning about here, it is your senior year and, you know, and, and, and it's not about playing the games. That's everything. It's, it's everything in between. And um, what are some creative things you're doing that's helping, you know, you know, of course, other than being quarantined, making things memorable. Uh, what are you guys trying to do virtually that, you know, trying to make things fun, even though you can't see each other? Any of um, Yeah. So when we do our Zooms, we kind of like to start off, you know, we've been doing definitely a lot of, you know, lacrosse specific stuff just because, you know, that's why these guys are here is because they, you know, they love the sport and so do we It's coaches and stuff too. But um We've been starting off our Zooms with just some funny stuff, you know, now that classrooms have gone to the Zoom level, you know, I have some funny stories from the, you know, elementary level where, you know, whatever we're doing that I can share with the kids. And then, you know, these guys have some pretty funny ones too that, uh, you know, I can't condone as a teacher, but some of the stuff has been pretty funny that these guys are doing. And uh, for the players, can you talk a little bit about uh, your lacrosse history, how long you've been playing uh, lacrosse and when you first got interested in the sport start off with Seth yeah so uh, my first year I think it was in third grade and I actually played baseball and lacrosse and uh, definitely after that year I knew lacrosse was for me and that uh, baseball is just too slow for me and I fell in love with lacrosse after that and been playing ever since wonderful how about you Connor yeah, probably. I think it was like second grade. I started playing, but I really like like baseball more. And then around middle school, I just like loved lacrosse a lot more and like had more fun playing it. So I switched and pretty much just continued playing nonstop after that. Excellent. Uh, how about you, Luke? So my dad went to Holy Cross and played uh, lacrosse there. So ever since me and my brother were born, we've always had a stick in our hands. So we started in uh, kindergarten, first grade. Uh, we've been doing it ever since. And uh, some of like the most memorable games are with these guys in middle school. And before that, just playing other towns in our select team, uh, even before high school. So it's just, uh, it's been a long journey, but it's been a lot of fun. Excellent. And uh, did we miss anybody, Connor? Yeah, sorry. So Stevens power went out, and uh, he's seven a little trouble <laughs> getting back on. Ah, okay. Oh, there he yeah. is. He just came back. I'm gonna let him in. That's certainly an issue today with all that wind out there. That's for yeah. sure. I already lost half my roof already. <laughs> well, that's how I started my day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still here for the show. Yes, it's pretty hey. good. Hey, look, you said you were born with the sticks in your hand, and uh, I see a nice old one in the back. Is that a yep. family uh, item there? No, I got that um, maybe five or six years ago. Uh, it has my name ingrained in um, my number, number seven. Uh, my parents got it for me, one for my brother as well. So uh, that was something really special. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. And we got uh, Stephen back with us. Uh, Steven, uh, just had the players talking about their lacrosse history. Um, can you talk about how long you've been playing lacrosse and when you first got interested in the sport? Yeah, sorry, my power just went out, so I, I tried to put up a little hospital <laughs> back in here. But, um, yeah, so my dad had was actually a baseball guy his whole life, so I grew up playing baseball. And then my next-door neighbor actually introduced me to lacrosse. Um, I would play in the backyard with his son. So I, I ended up joining, I think I was fourth or fifth grade. I joined a little later than I think some of these guys did. But, you know, it was, immediately when I started playing, I, I really fell in love with it. It was something I loved to do was just, like, you know, run, run around and then I'd play a game like that. Like, that's why I like basketball, too. There's different sports like that. So I really started falling in love with it right when I started playing. And I've been playing ever since. And, and Stephen, uh, of course, you had a great run with the basketball team. Uh, this season, can you talk about uh, what it was like to go all the way to the sectional finals this year? Yeah, no, it was awesome. You know, it was, it was really, it is awesome to see your work where you start right when the season, right when the season ended last year, you know, you put that work in to start for the next year and being able to, just being in the central finals, just seeing all that work really come to fruition and like to get there was awesome. Um, it, it was it was really fun just being with the guys that long. I mean, obviously we didn't win, so that was tough. But just just getting there and you know when we were just like being at that game, like the support we had, just not from the student, not just from the students, but the whole town. It, it was really special, and 
you know, hopefully we'll have the chance to do something this year in lacrosse, whether it just be play or, you know, if we have some type of playoff or something like that, you know, hopefully try to do something like that here. Yeah, absolutely. We're certainly hoping for at least uh, some games this year. I know the MIA just uh, recently had a vote uh, where they pretty much canceled the state tournament, but the sectionals are still a go, at least for now. So hopefully we'll have that. Um, so one thing that a lot of uh, high school teams, high school athletes have been doing is, uh, especially on Twitter, sharing some of their favorite memories uh, of their careers. So I want to ask you guys to talk about some of your favorite memories of your careers as lacrosse players. We'll start off uh, with Coach Norton. Um, honestly, as a coach, I think it's, you know, it's just those guys share the like individual like wins and stuff a little more. You know, I, I think it's just, you know, the stuff in between. I think, uh, you know, Seth was talking about it too, just, you know, I, I, my memories are, you know, the connections made, you know, while we're stretching and talking, you know, in between drills, you know, the bus rides, um, you know, with kids after practice, you know, those are, those are the connections and the, and the memories that I love just, you know, watching these boys, you know, when we get them turn into men when, when, when they're done. And, uh, you know, that's really special to me. So I can't really narrow it down to one. I know that's kind of a generic answer, but, uh, you know, I think it's just the, the, process of watching these kids grow up and, and, um, you know, being a part of that. Is there any specific games that you coach that you could recall that, uh, were just unbelievable to be coaching at? Um, probably, probably my first, my first one in Hopkinton. Um, we had, uh, the, our original opener was like snowed out or something like that. So, our first game was at Ashland where I had just head coached those kids the year before. So it was, it was a little weird. Um, and there was a lot more fans than there normally would be for a, a lacrosse game there. So, um, you know, it was kind of fun. Uh, you know, the, the fans were getting rowdy and, you know, um, a lot of people were mad at me, but it kind of made it fun too. And we won. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So did, uh, I'm, I'm the optimist, you know, that May 7th, we're going to see our first lacrosse game, right? Yes, sir. Hey, so, and with that, how are you? How have you? Because I, I know you're an optimist as well. And how are you? Uh, how do you have yourself prepared mentally? And how are you going to get these kids ready for that May 7th start day? Well, I think, I mean, the motivation piece this year, like, you know, with this group we have, anyways, like, you know, these kids are so motivated, but I think with this going on right now, you know, if it's, if someone said, Hey, we can have practice in 10 minutes, you know, they'd be there in one minute, you know, it's, uh, you know, th we have a very special group. Um, so I think, you know, the motivation piece, these guys, you're looking at them right there, you know, they do, they do it for our team. And, um, and especially with this year, whatever, whatever we can salvage, you know, I don't think there's going to be a single kid in any, in any program across the state. That's not, coming foaming at the mouth ready to go um sure but i think especially with our with our senior group um you know just to brag about them a little bit too um you know they've they've got the in their freshman or junior year they have the highest win total of a three-year period in our program history and um you know it's all it's all due to you know not just these four guys here but this whole this whole senior class is just very special we got 12 guys that are um you know, committed to our, you know, off season weight room stuff, uh, community service, uh, just a very special class. Well, that's, yeah, that was the other question I wanted to say with the community service part of it, uh, to, to you boys, are there any community service that you're able to do virtually, or is there any kind of community service work that you guys are doing now? Uh, yeah. So I was just cleaning out my basement the other day. And I found a bunch of old uh, lacrosse sticks, shafts, heads, um, some with good mesh, some with bad mesh. And I've been stringing sticks since the second grade as well. My dad uh, <laughs> taught me how to do that. So I have about seven heads, I believe, that um, I'm going to string up and put some shafts on. And we'll try to get those to the youth players, uh, some new youth players, when, when this all clears up. But um, that's as it's as much as we can do right now for uh, community service, at least for right. me. Yeah, you're being, you guys are being creative. You're doing what little you can. Mm -hmm. How about anybody else? Uh, um, I've donated some food. 
to like people in need, but can't really do a ton of community service right now, but yeah. We've actually yeah. got a, a store up right now too. Um, it just came up today. So if anybody who's watching goes to our um, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, um, you know, just a web store where instead of us gaining proceeds, we're going to donate it to the Massachusetts COVID-19 fund. Um, and what, what's that website? Um, if you just go to our Twitter at Hiller, Twitter? Um, there's a link there. Excellent. Sorry to cut you off, Steve. No, um, I mean, I wish I knew how to string heads. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, unfortunately, there's nothing really I'm doing right now. But I'm happy. I'm lucky enough to, and my family's lucky enough to be healthy. So if there's anything we can do, I'm sure, I'm sure we'd love to. And I want to ask you, uh, guys about uh what's some of your favorite memories as players of boys lacrosse is there any specific games or moments uh that were just uh fun or exciting to be a part of uh we could start off with you steven yeah uh definitely definitely last year we we won the playoff game as well and that was definitely a memorable one it was our first playoff win as as a group since we had joined you know we had 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 some success in the regular season and uh, freshman and sophomore year and then junior year, but we had never really gotten that over that hill where we got that playoff win. So that win was awesome. And then something that wasn't in high school, uh, when we were eighth grade, you know, our senior group has been really close. These lacrosse guys, we've been playing all since we were younger. So when we play eighth grade, we, we had a big rivalry against Franklin, you know, they're not on the TVL, but they're there that we played every year. Um, some of us guys know some of them, so it was always a big game, and we finally got that that win that we've been looking for in our final final game of eighth grade. So that was, that was a big memory for us. Wonderful, and I think we may have lost uh, Seth. So uh, how about you, Connor? Any specific uh, memories you can recall? Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to say the playoff game last year, is because it was our first win ever, and we like started off really slow, and we were down, and then we just battled back and played like flawless in the second, third, and fourth quarter and ended up blowing them out. And it was just awesome to be a part of like our first win, playoff win. And yeah. What, what about you, Luke? Yeah, I immediately thought of um, Westwood, the Westwood game, uh, the away game sophomore year. Um, we we won it um, in the last, last couple of minutes. And freshman year, we had lost them a few times. So that was just, that was just, a, a big game marked on our schedules um, all year and uh, we finally, finally beat them. And that was just a great feeling. Excellent. And uh, we do have a uh, YouTube question from one of our viewers, uh, Matt, what's our uh, YouTube question? Uh, yeah. Someone watching wants to know um, among you, are there any hockey players and are there any, is there any crossover of skills and strategy between the two sports? Um, for us three, or, and Seth, none of us play hockey, but there are definitely kids on our team that play hockey. Um, I'm not, I can't really speak for experience, but I think definitely like guys that play hockey that had joined lacrosse last year, it was kind of like their first time. Def I feel like their stick skills were like developed a little quicker, just, you know, having that feel with a hockey stick and kind of translating to lacrosse, obviously not the same, definitely different skills, but just the feel for having the stick in your hand, I felt like definitely helped them cross over, but uh, unfortunately, we can't really. I can't really answer that question. But well, what about you as a basketball player, uh, Stephen? Is there any specific skills or drills that uh, benefit you playing both sports? Uh, yeah, you know, whenever someone asks me like, "What's it like playing multiple sports?" You know, I love it because I'm able to translate what I do in some sports and bring it together. So I, I play point guard in basketball, and you know, just growing up playing point guard, you really learn to like. To, with a vision and like unselfish play stuff like that and you kind of look step ahead of what, the next play and you know what's gonna happen if one guy slides to you and like kind of the like the puzzle pieces of the game so for me like that was something that really helped when, when I started playing lacrosse and kind of started understanding a little bit more I felt like growing up playing basketball it's kind of able to see the game a little better so that definitely helped me and then you know different drills I guess that translate um i feel like kind of i'll translate kind of just take you take one thing from the other sport and bring it into to the next one and uh coach so uh 
have you put together a workout type of plan that you send to all your players or anything like that? Yeah. So we're actually, um, so I'll do like the lacrosse end of it. And then, um, you know, Mike Peschler, uh, has been sharing some, um, you know, at home workouts that you don't need any equipment for. So it's been great. Uh, you know, that's, it's been very helpful just because not everyone has, you know, like a full gym set up at their house. So it's, you know, able to include everybody. And then I'll send the, you know, lacrosse specific type of stuff. Terrific. And uh, again, hopefully we'll see a season in the very near future. Uh, what do you guys miss most about normal life and uh, being in school? Uh, we'll start off with Connor. Yeah, I just missing seeing people that like I'm not like super close with, just people in school and just like talking to everyone and just like seeing people besides your family and like not on a video screen. So it's just kind of tough not being able to do that. And uh, how about you, Luke? Well, the other day, my mom asked me to to just run a quick errand, uh, grab something from the store, and I just got so excited to leave the house. That was just one thing, like, you don't really know what you have until you don't have it. Like, just the freedom to go wherever you want and uh, to do whatever you want. Really, I, I'm really missing that right about now, so. How about you, Steven? Yeah, uh, I definitely feel like we it really puts stuff into perspective you know we've taken some things for granted like if you were to tell us you know you don't you have like a snow day or something like we would we'd be awesome it would be awesome we would have to go to school we'd be we'd be excited but yeah uh, we really took it for granted because now you know we, we might never get back to go to get to go back to high school and for us that's like that's that stinks you know we, there's people we might not see people we not talk to but there's people that we want to say bye to and you know those interactions that those everyday interactions that we really just take for granted are something I definitely miss. Yeah, I have to say, I'm sure this is the tough. It's tough for everybody, but especially the seniors who may not get to see their uh, classmates for a while. Uh, that has to be tough for you guys. Coach, uh, what are uh, some of the things that you miss about everyday normal life? Um, just being able to see these guys. You know, this is my favorite time of year. Um, you know, uh, feel blessed that I, you know, get to call this a job where I get to go and hang out with awesome guys like these guys and, and coach with some of my great friends and, you know, coach against some of my great friends. You know, I think our, our league is a very special league where we have, you know, everyone who, everyone who we coach against is always, you know, awesome and, you know, always good to catch up and, uh, you know, win or lose. It's, it's just a great time. And, uh, you know, to Steve's point too, I think, you know, there are times during a normal season where you're frustrated or this or that, but, you know, I'd, I'd give this up for being frustrated right now with something, I, you know, definitely miss it. Uh, but I'm just so proud of these guys here and, and all of our, all of our kids just for, you know, continuing to, you know, make the most out of the situation and, and find a positive in it. Well, I have to say, I miss calling games. <laughs> <laughs> Spring season's usually a lot of fun when you have boys and girls lacrosse, softball, baseball. Uh, it's a big, probably a, the most sports going on in any given season. So certainly missing uh, calling games a little bit. Uh, Coach, I want to have you uh, mention uh, that uh, what you guys are doing. Uh, you mentioned your Twitter, the Hillers Boys Lacrosse Twitter. Uh, could you talk about uh, that program just to uh, get out there what you guys are doing? Yeah, so um, what we're doing is uh, through Atlantic Sportswear. It's a web store that closes on the 20th. And... Um, you know, uh, obviously that, that company is going to be making money, but any, any of the, um, funds that would have come to our program, cause it's normally run as a fundraiser, hundred percent of the funds that are, that would have come to us, we're going to donate to the Massachusetts COVID-19 fund. Um, so, you know, there's many options on there. Uh, you know, uh, I believe it comes out to like, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know the exact percent. It's around like four bucks per per item that would go towards this fund. And then they'll, you know, cut us a check that our team can present to the COVID-19 fund. Um, but it's only open for a week. It's like a strict one week thing. Um, and then it just mails directly to the, to the purchaser too. It wouldn't, it wouldn't come to me. And there's some very nice stuff up on that website as well. Some great uh, Hiller's lacrosse gear. So be sure to check out Hiller's boys lacrosse on Twitter 
and they are you guys are raising money for a great cause uh and thanks for all you guys have done for the community between your volunteer efforts and all the great stuff that the uh, boys lacrosse program is doing thank you for having us on thank you very much thank, thank you very, very much, much. Yeah. Yeah, all right we'll guys stay we'll safe out there stay safe see you guys you soon too. We'll certainly have to do it again, guys. Take care. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. All right. We got Thank a couple uh, more minutes left here. So, Mike, uh, yeah. it has to be tough for the seniors to not be playing right now. I tell you, it's the worst. It's, it's going to be tough for all the seniors because this is the this is their last year. This is the best time. This is what all the hard work leads up to. And let, let's leave the sports part of it. Just being a senior alone. You know, you, you're going to probably lose out on your cruise, your senior dinner, your senior dance, juniors lose out on their proms, but all these things that, uh, you know, that we have to do to stay alive and keep others alive. And these kids have great spirits. You see it all over Facebook and Instagram on uh, how much they're doing to support each other. Um, like you said, he was looking for, is they want to, they want to give, they can't go out and do community service. So what does he do? He goes downstairs, starts restringing up some sticks, you know, just to give to youth players. That's fantastic. Yeah, it certainly is. And really, it's it's about anything you could do to help out anybody right now. Hopkinton Hillers football took on Norwood in the season finale. The first possession of the game did not go well for the Hillers. Out of the gun. Motion along the right, and he's going to fake the handoff. Looks to his right, throws to his right, and it's intercepted. Jason Danahy is there to pick it off. Intended target was Nicholas Essi. After the interception, Norwood got on the scoreboard first. With a back to either side. Motion from left to right, the tight end in motion. Receiver spread out to the right as well. Takes the snap a little bit low, but pulls it up, and here he goes. Finds some room across midfield. 40, 35, 30, 20. The 10, the 5, and into the end zone. A 56-yard touchdown run by Jason Dennehy. The extra point makes it a 7-0 game, but the Hillers responded. Left to right, takes the snap, rolls to his right under a little bit of pressure. He'll throw up the right side, as a target, and it's caught. And there he goes, Ethan Champlin is going to go all the way to the 10-yard line. What a connection there. His left is Mulvaney, three receivers spread out to his left. Takes the snap, rolls to his left, and he's going to take it himself along the far sideline. And did he get in? He was close. Yes, he did. Touchdown, Hillers. A 7-7 game, but Norwood would find the end zone two more times in the first quarter. And they led it 21-7, heading into the second. To the 40, to the 50. Here goes Christian Sales to the 30, to the 20, the 10, and oh no, it's another Norwood touchdown. So, Slotman to his right takes the snap, and he's going to pass, throws up the right side of the field, and he connects, and it's a touchdown. A 44 yard touchdown reception to James Gamble, the senior. The Hillers struck first in the second quarter. Takes the snap, rolls to his left, and he is going to take it himself to the 20, fighting his way to the 15, still on his feet, and he was able to spin around a defender and fight his way up to about the 12-yard line. What a run there by Cole Salyards. Salyards going to line it up out of the gun, Mulvaney the back to his right, and he is going to hand it off. Mulvaney fights some room right up the middle, and into the end zone he goes. A 10-yard touchdown run. Hillers make it a 21-14 game with a 10-yard Cam Mulvaney touchdown run, but Norwood strikes right back. They can tighten up here and get their offense back out there with a chance to tie the game up. And over end it goes. It'll sail back to about the 12-yard line. Here comes the return. Along the far side goes Mateer, and he has some room. Uh-oh, across midfield. 45, 40, 30, up to the 20, the 10. And he's into the end zone. Unbelievable. 28 to 14, Norwood leading, but the Hillers had an answer. Just declined it. Salyard's going to line it up out of the gun. Takes the snap, looks upfield, throws up the middle, has Mulvaney, and it's complete. And up to the 16 yard line go the Hillers. Oh, maybe because of that, they'll come into the second half a little 
colder. And this is going to be a run up the middle on the keeper Salyards. Not a problem. A one yard touchdown run. Cole Salyards finishes off the touchdown drive with a one yard run, and it would stay 28 to 21 Norwood until the halftime break. Norwood struck for two touchdowns in the third quarter and took a 42 to 21 lead into the fourth. 20, the 10, and into the end zone. Brian Mateer breaks free and runs 61 yards up the field for the touchdown. Norwood struck for another touchdown to start the fourth. Back to either side, receivers spread out to either side and he will hand it off to the right back. Here goes the call and the call's gonna break free. The 30, the 20, the 10 and all the way to the end zone. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown Norwood. The Hillers got some fourth quarter offense going, trailing 49 to 21. Spread out to either side. He'll hand it off. Here goes Mulvaney breaking free up the far side of the 40, the 35, the 30. And he's tripped out of bounds just past the 30. A great run there by Cam Mulvaney. From about the five, Salyard's going to line it up out of the gun. Mulvaney to his right. He'll take the snap. He'll roll to his right, and he's going to find some room along the far side of the field, and he gets into the end zone. Cole Salyards with some nice footwork. A five-yard run by Cole Salyards. The two-point conversion was no good. The Hillers were quick to get the ball back and found the end zone again. 40 to the 25 to the 20, and he's pushed out of bounds at around the 15. A big pick up there by Carrazza. Gonna line it up out of the gun. Mulvaney to his right, takes the snap, under pressure, finds some room along the near side, and he is going to get towards the end zone. Did he get in? Yes, he did! Touchdown, Hillers! A 12-yard run this time by Salyards, and a successful two-point conversion makes it a 49-35 game. The Hillers played hard until the end, but fell in the season finale by a 49-35 final. The Hillers finished the season with two wins and three losses. Congratulations to Coach McLean and the Hillers on a great season. So it was Hopkins Middle School's uh, final scrimmage of the season. All the kids had been working really, really hard. Andrew's a multi-sport athlete and it was really important for him to play in the last football scrimmage of the year. And it was probably his best run of the year. He broke it out to the left, uh, eluded like two tacklers. And then as he was being tackled, he suffered a pretty decent uh, ankle injury. And luckily, you know, we have great responders, not only the parents that were in attendance there, but our athletic trainer was immediately on the scene, as well as first responders from uh, Hopkinton EMS. And really, they were in and out of there with Andrew in about 15 minutes, it, you know, and I'm sure to Andrew and for us as coaches and parents, it felt like an eternity, but it was just such an amazing response. Andrew's about as tough as they come. He was still joking around a little bit. And from what I hear, he's getting the best attention he can possibly get, and we can't wait to have him back. Today was our uniform return day, but more importantly, the parents and the kids reached out to me. They wanted to do something special for Andrew. And so they all came down, and what they did was they signed a football here with some well wishes. And in the back, you can probably hear some of the chatter. They're all signing a card, and the number of kids who were just jumping uh, for the opportunity to say something nice to their teammate was unreal. And that's really what our football team is about, is community, family, and commitment to one another. And, I mean, nothing proves that more th uh, than today. Andrew, my man, um, I can't tell you how much it broke your coaching staff's heart for your season to end the way it did. And that's because of everything you've given us this season. You're a part of what we are. You're a part of this community. And we wouldn't be the same team without you.
So we can't wait to have you back. I know this isn't a, you know, as much as we wish we could do for you, but we hope that it's something. And you're a strong kid. You're going to be back better than ever in the fall. Best of luck to you. I hope you have a great summer, and I'll see you around. You're a champion, Drew. We want to thank you for watching HCAM Sports Talk Live. Don't forget, Hiller Spring Sports in full swing right now. Head over to our website, hcam.tv, as well as our social media pages to see our upcoming broadcasts. We're bringing you all the varsity home games for the spring sports season, and we'll have many playoff games, hopefully, coming up as well. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. Thanks again for watching. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again soon.